Well, here we are with the June 2011 Regents Physics exam, and this is page 8. There's only three questions on here, but they're all graphing questions. And graphing questions can be solved using the same technique, so let's try that. In the first one, you've got a space probe, it's launched into space, which graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted on the Earth by the space probe and the distance between the space probe and the center of the Earth. So the first thing you do is to find the equation, and that's uh, right here. And that equation says the force of gravity is equal to g, gravitational constant, mass 1, mass 2, and distance squared. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to look at the choices. I'm just going to draw it. Here's the formula. Force equals g m1 m2 over r squared and uh, g won't change, the mass of the satellite and the mass of the Earth won't change. All of these are going to be the same because it's just a proportion, they're not giving me any numbers. I can make up any numbers I want. So I'm going to say my force is equal to 1 times 1 times 1. 1 over the distance squared. And so now I put in some pretend numbers. Let's see, my distance uh, can be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. And then what would my force be? Well, and that would be uh, 1 divided by 1 squared would be 1. 1 divided by 2 squared, that would be a fourth. 1 divided by 3 squared, that would be a ninth. 1 divided by 4 squared, that would be a sixteenth. So if here's my force and here's my distance, as my distance goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, my force would go from 1 to a fourth to a ninth to a sixteenth. So this is the graph that represents that relationship. Let's go see if we can find that graph, and as it turns out, it's choice two. Choice three over here goes down, but it doesn't go down exponentially. Choice one stays the same. Choice four actually increases. So that's got to be the solution. Question 42. Which graph represents the relationship between the gravitational potential energy of an object near the surface of the Earth and its height above the surface of the Earth? Let's use the same technique. First thing we do is to find the formula. We're told the gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh. I remember that. So let's write the formula. Potential energy is equal to mg and h. The mass is going to stay the same, and the acceleration due to gravity will stay the same. Let's just assign a values of 1. So potential energy is basically equal to height. That's proportionality. So if we draw that, potential energy, height, for 1 would be 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, As the height increases, so does the gravitational potential energy. And purely coincidentally, the answer to that one is also 2. 1 says the potential energy stays the same regardless of the height. That's not right. 3 has got it going up, but it's got it going up exponentially. That can't be right. And 4 tells us the potential energy goes down as you get higher. That's not right. Question 43. Two parallel metal plates are connected to a variable source of potential difference. When the potential difference of the source is increased, the magnitude of the electric field strength between the plates increases. The diagram below shows an electron located between the plates. Now this type of problem used to be very common. Everybody had a television set that had a picture tube in it. And a picture tube had electric plates that shot electrons between them. Very common, very important. Nowadays with the LED TVs and the plasma TVs, uh, it's harder and harder to find a situation where this is applicable, but we can still answer it. So they want us to know which graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the electrostatic force on the electron and the magnitude of the electric field strength between the plates. I don't know how to do this, but I bet you there's a formula somewhere. So I go to my electricity formulas and go over to the terms, and here we go. E is electric field strength and Fe is electrostatic force. Let's go find a formula that's got E and Fe in it. And it's this one. E is equal to Fe over Q. So I'm going to try it first. Let's see. E is equal to Fe over Q. 
Now the charge is going to be the same. It's the charge of an electron, so that won't change. So as the electrostatic field strength increases, the force will also increase directly. So again, if I were to graph that, I'd say uh, 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, 3 would be equal to 3. They were directly related. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It looks like as the electric field strength increases, so does the force acting on that charge. And the answer to that is going to be choice 4. Can't be 3, can't be 2. One looks like it could be, except it's curving, which means it's not a direct relationship.